Hello. Well, here I am, uh, ready to uh, conclude my uh, discussions of the Godfather trilogy, particularly, you know, uh, what my first impressions were, as well as um, if they pretty much are the same or if they've changed in any way. Um, I also have a clean face this time. I decided to shave since spring and all. Um, and, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, Godfather 3, uh, Part 3. Um, I remember hearing it was always like the worst of the trilogy or the weakest of the trilogy, whatever. Uh, uh, I think would fit uh, regarding your one's thoughts on the film. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't too happy with certain aspects of the film, like the Vatican stuff. They're like, what? I, uh, that seemed to be a bit much for The Godfather. Um, though, you know, the business they do and everything, you know, gambling and whatnot, you know, and getting uh, involved in any way with the Pope. Uh, yeah, you can see how it's a quite... That part is a bit... <laughs> you know, a bit out there. Um, but upon watching it for the first time, um, I mean, I've seen it many times since, but first time seeing it, uh, I didn't mind it. Um, yes, I do think it is the weakest of the trilogy, um, but I don't think it's all that bad. Um, with what there is, what they did, um, with the film, I think it's I think it's a fine film. Um, probably would not have you know given this film best picture like the other two received. Um, though I do think Al Pacino deserved an Oscar nomination for this, um, regardless if he would have won or not. Um, of course, you know he wasn't nominated, but for best actor, so it's like you know if you were to go to and nominate him, you'd have to look at all the nominees and see who to, uh, which four should stay and who the, who the fifth one should be to get out so Pacino could be uh, given a spot. Um, though he was nominated that year also, but for supporting actor um, for Dick Tracy. <clears throat> so, you know, that was good. Um, but, yeah, the, uh, the film... Um, uh, really received quite mixed reviews. There are people who enjoyed it. There are people who didn't. And, uh, and then after watching all the three films back when I was 13, um, you know, I looked at all of them and, and enjoyed them. Um, and then I watched the special features. I watched the bonus material and I... My appreciation even grew more than before. Um, I really also enjoyed uh, uh, looking at the behind the scenes of part three and hearing Coppola and what he kind of wanted initially to do for it, um, and then how things changed, uh, how they are now. I kind of appreciated uh, quite uh, more, uh, quite a bit more. Um, and I've listened to other interviews and stuff. And you know, one negative is of, often cited is the fact that um, Robert Duvall is not in the film. Uh, it's not Tom Hagen, unfortunately. Um, and uh, there's been dispute with his, Duvall and Copa regarding the reason why. Um, Duvall said, like, you know, it was obviously made for money. There's no really other reason, you know, if you're going to do a third one, why not have done it around that time, you know, did the first two, you know, why wait like 
two decades or so later, like after the first one, because you know, it was about two decades after the first film, that part three came out. You know, why wait that long to do part you know, do part three? Um, which is a good point. Um, and even Coppola himself even said, you know, he did it for money. Um, the studio wanted money, or wanted, not, well, they do want money, but they wanted a third Godfather film. Um, uh, Coppola, he was, in the 80s, he was trying to do various films. He was trying to make certain films that were, like, more artsy and, like, more personal. He did a lot of commercial films, like the first two Godfather films, for instance, you know, uh, to help fund these smaller projects, and some of those projects in the 80s did not, uh, quite a bit of them did not do well. Um, I have to say, none of his films in the 80s uh, are bad. You know, The Outsiders came out of the 80s, and people enjoy that film. Um, so, you know, he's, he's Coppola is still a very good, competent director. Um, he you know, been wanting to do a lot of other films, quite smaller. He said, sure, you know, he did this. He he did part three, uh, but and he had to really think about what would happen. Like, what do we do now? You know, with how part two ended, it's like it pretty much sort of uh, wrapped things up. But then you know the whole liking of. Uh, the idea of all the things, all the negative aspects and things of what Michael has done in the previous films, you know, things would be haunted, like the uh, Fredo's death, ordering his death. That comes back to haunt him. And um, I actually do like that angle, too, especially when, I mean, it, it was quite obvious why, you know, like his past is haunting him and he's just, you know, uh, uh, he's just very uh, tormented by it all. Um, again, these were all my first impressions. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, with that all happening, um, regarding Duval, you know, Coppola says he wanted like five times more, or want to be paid like like the same or similar amount to Al Pacino. El Duval said no. He said like, you know, Al Pacino. Obviously, he's the main character. He's the lead. Makes sense. He's gonna make the most out of more than everybody else. But like, they wanted him to wanted Pacino to like, get paid like four or five times more or something and Duval wasn't happy with that. It's like, you know, makes double what I'm going to make, fine. But like four or five times, no. And Coppola's like, oh, he asked for too much money. <clears throat> he said, and maybe I did, maybe I asked for a bit more, but, I, you know, I, he just, you know, if he was going to do it, he wanted his fair share and not... Uh, you know, just have not to be there and then just get paid very little in comparison to Pacino. Um, you know. And uh, there are some essays, video essays, that do talk about this film in quite a po more positive light and in better ways than I ever could here. Um, I enjoy this film, as I said, you know, Upon first viewing and, and subsequent viewings, um, and while my opinion hasn't changed that uh, it's the it's the weakest of the trilogy, I mean, I still I think I appreciate a bit more each viewing. If that makes sense, you know how some films are. You know, the more you watch it, the more you enjoy it. And that's kind of with me for this film. Um, the more I watch Godfather Three, I enjoy it, and you no. Know, like regarding Sofia Coppola, yeah, she's not the worst, or she's not the best actress in this film. But 
the way people have they made it out before I saw it. People who had seen these films and other people you know, yeah, hear about regarding talking about this saying it was complete garbage with no redeemable qualities whatsoever, pretty much. Um, uh, there are worse actresses than her. There are worse actors than her. And also given the circumstances of how Winona Ryder was supposed to be in the movie, but dropped out to do Edward Scissorhands, so, and it was so close to shooting, they couldn't just stop everything for however many weeks or months to find a new uh, actress to play uh, Michael's daughter, who plays a very crucial role in the film. And Coppola asked his daughter to be in this film. She said, fine. Uh, you know, as a favor, you know, <clears throat> knowing how he was in a situation where he had to get this going and went on a writer dropping out pretty much last minute uh, was not something that was wanted or especially needed. Uh, it wasn't something where Copa thought at the last minute, oh, she's not right. Uh, but now, if I let her go, who are we going to get to replace her? I'll get Sophia, she's here. You know, it wasn't something like that. It was just, it was a necessity for somebody to play that part. Very, It was a very cru crucial part. And, um, yeah. Um, it's a, it's, it's quite interesting how things like that can happen in the film world, some of these change, or some of these decisions or circumstances that happen, you know, are good, sometimes they're not so good, you know, it can be bad or, even if it isn't necessarily seen as bad, it's like, it could have been better, but, yeah, it's not really looking good. You know, this, you know, again, I, I think everybody has seen worse performances and there were some moments in the film when she's talking to Andy Garcia, his character, here and there, um, where she's not all that bad. I mean, sure, the romance stuff with those two isn't the greatest, you know, uh, romantic uh, chemistry on film, but it's not horrible. You know, I wouldn't say it was just, oh, horrible. Just, just makes you not even want to watch the movie or watch it. Makes you want to turn it off. I don't, you know, I don't get that. Um, at least I haven't. You know, there are, there is, has been worse acting since Sofia Coppola's performance in The Godfather 3 and even before. Um, yeah. So while that casting decision could have been made a bit better, uh, especially since people saw that as nepotism, and he just chose his daughter because she's his daughter, and not because he saw her having great acting talent or anything of that nature, you know, I, with the circumstances you find, I understand. Um, and another thing, when watching the, like documentaries on here. Um, find out Coppola wanted to call this film the death of Michael Corleone instead of the Godfather part three because you know you like you know well it's a saga you know the Godfather saga you know it should be fine uh, maybe a trilogy uh, calling it part three would be like it's a continuation from the previous installments and he's like this should be an epilogue because this why else would you make it? And that was something he wanted to do from the beginning. But because of some of the stuff, like the films he had made in the 80s was not all, and it wasn't all that great, um, he just, he didn't have the power to uh, make the third installment being able to call it the death of Michael Corleone. You know, whatever power 
you know, he would have had to have made <clears throat> that decision. Uh, it had waned, it waned quite drastically to where that he, he wasn't able to do that, unfortunately. Um, so we have a. Uh, It's now the Godfather part three. And if it was, I think as if seen as an epilogue, I think the perception of this film, uh, I think it can be better. I'm not saying people will like it more, but I think people will see it differently and will be able to, at the very least, tolerate it more, if you if not liking it. I That was sort of the impression I had after re-watching the movie a few more times after seeing the documentaries and behind the scenes footage and all that information that was there uh, I'm able to appreciate part three more um, you know it's and I'm, many people were happy with Michael being diabetic and not at the peak of his power like he was back in Godfather two days, but you know, I mean, he's an older man. You know, he's not going to be completely. You know, he's not necessarily going to be the man he once was. He's going to obviously change. We see that here. Um, and while I don't uh, hate that uh, part of the movie with him being diabetic and everything, you know, I think it's very understandable that uh, such a change would occur regardless if that change be yes he should be diabetic so he needs sugar and stuff to be bounced back from any kind of uh, a moment where he's about to uh, faint or get lightheaded or any of that anything like that um, you know he needs some sugar in him to help Bounce back, orange juice, something. Um, you know, it, I understand that, and sure, it could be, it could have been done better. You know, uh, maybe you want to demonstrate uh, that with a, um, you know, him not being the peak anymore, and he doesn't have the power he once had. You know, and isn't as like his dad, who remained quite strong after all this. Though he is a bit more ruthless than his father, but his father was a good combination of Michael, Sonny, and Fredo. All these personalities, but he was able to control all of them together. Like each of his sons had his <clears throat> a per certain personality trait that Vito possessed. And Michael, you know, he just... He doesn't have that, as, you know, he's not able to, him being as cold as he was in the, in part two, as he was able to be, you know, that's catching up with him, so, yeah. It, maybe that's something that's haunting him too? I don't know. It's just sort of a thought that just came to me right now. You know, uh, <laughs> maybe after making this video and I think about it a bit it might change my mind. Very possible. Um, but yeah, um, I enjoy this film. Um, not the best of the trilogy, but it's a fine film. It's a, it's a, it's a very fine film. Uh, uh, now, the film I think is the best of this trilogy is part one. Um, I know part two gets a lot of love, obviously, uh, and for a very good reason. You know, it's not lost on me why people love part two the best. I just love the father and son relationship with Michael and Vito. There's just something about Pacino and Brando bouncing off each other and seeing their interactions and how... Michael didn't want to be part of the family business, but at the end of the film, 
he is the head of the family business now. <clears throat> and you see how what transpired to get him into the position he is at the end. And also how even if he was like, you know, he didn't want this for him. He wanted something else for him. Um, you know, and Michael obviously wanted to stay away at the beginning. And I just love that. I mean, there's other reasons, but if I had to really just point, pinpoint just one, you know, uh, one reason why, that's it. I just love their, their relationship they had. And, and I think it's a very big, it's very important, because the, these films are, in an essence, about family. And I just loved how in the first one, you have all the family, the core family there. And um, you see this transition of power from father to son, you know, with Sonny, and then eventually to Michael. And I just love how different a, uh, we see the different approaches each son takes to running the family business compared to the father. Um, I really just, I just love it. Um, I love these films. Um, you know, regardless of how uh, three is and how it's not the greatest, I still enjoy watching it. You know, I like having a marathon like a weekend or so every once in a while. Just watch the Godfather trilogy, and I'm just able to enjoy myself for about three hours. I, uh, for like about three hours, for like one, three, and over three hours for two. You know, it's it's just these are good films to watch. You know, uh, I'm glad I watched them when I did, and I'm happy I watch them now. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you all think of uh, the Godfather trilogy? Um, I guess in particular for this video, part three. Um, do you enjoy it? Do you like it? Dislike it? Um, has your thoughts on the film changed in any way? Um, do you uh, uh, have a particular favorite of the trilogy? Is it one? Is it two? Or is it even three? I mean, there could be somebody who really enjoys three the best. And if so, that's great. You know, uh, uh, it's not a horrible film. Um, yeah, I think it's the weakest, but I still enjoy it. Um, but I'd be interested to hear uh, what you think about the film. If you think it's the best, why that is. I'd be very interested. Um... So, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Um, I hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, a great week. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye.